Good afternoon, my name is Patty O'Callaghan and this is my presentation on contingency leadership theories. I want to thank you in advance for viewing my presentation. I do appreciate your time. I'm going to try to move through everything contained in this presentation as quickly as possible to just stay within the time limits here. The purpose is to analyze the four contingency leadership theories that we were exposed to in our texts from this past week. The con contingency leadership theory, the continuum leadership theory, the path goal leadership theory, and the leadership substitutes theory. There's very many leadership or contingency leadership theories out there, but those are the four that we'll focus on. And then I will explain how I would implement the path goal theory in my current organization. What are contingency theories? Well, leadership is a very complex topic. And over the last several decades, a lot of leadership theories uh, developed in hopes to identify those characteristics and traits and skills and all that that make effective leaders. And uh, not one single skill or trait or characteristic will predict a leader's effectiveness. So there's a whole bunch of different theories that are developed because of that. Uh, the contingency theory of leadership was developed because the trait theory and the behavior theories, those are very important as well, but they don't address the environmental factors, you know, the situation. How does the situation affect the behaviors? And what is the situation and what behavior can a leader select and to handle the situation effectively? So it's an attempt to explain the most appropriate leadership approach based on the leader, the followers, and the situation. Fiedler was one of the first to uh, develop the contingency leadership theory back in the 50s, I believe. And he believed that leaders' effectiveness is based on situation. There are two factors to consider, the leadership style and the situational favor favorableness. There are two leadership styles, according to Fiedler, and that would be the task oriented and the relationship oriented, which are um, measured and assessed on the leadership style, uh, least preferred coworker leadership scale, excuse me, the LPC leadership scale. He believed that leadership styles are fixed and nearly impossible to adjust and that a leader is most effective when they're matched with situations that align best with their leadership styles. So this is an example of the LPC leadership scale. We saw one in chapter four. The results that I got were pretty on point. They aligned very well with my leadership approach. I am in the middle. I am both task oriented and relationship oriented. And uh, I've always been that way. I understand the importance of relationships and how those relationships drive the team and individuals towards accomplishing the organizational objectives. So a uh, person that scores high on the LPC would be relationship oriented and anyone who scores low LPC on the LPC would be task oriented. Situational favorableness leader member relations, what is the respect level, what is the trust, the task structure, um, are the tasks clearly explained and structured very well, is everything a mess, is there mass confusion, um, those things play a factor, and what is the positional power, does the leader have, you know, legitimate authority um, to reward or punish or anything like that, so the more power, the more favorable. I really enjoyed the Fiedler's contingency model. I feel like this diagram really kind of summarized things in a, in a nice way. 
Uh, again, identify leadership style, identify the situation, and then determine the best leadership approach for that situation. Task-motivated leaders perform best when they have the most control. Um, Relationship-motivated leaders perform best when they have moderate control. So you'll see that in this diagram here. So it's important to be familiar with both types and how the situation can affect your behavior and vice versa. Uh, continuum leadership, leadership theory, excuse me, developed by Tannenbaum and Schmidt. We have two styles here, boss-centered leadership and subordinate-centered leadership. The continuum leadership theory is a relationship between the level of authority exercised by the leader and the level of freedom given to the individual or the team. Who is making the decisions? Who has the authority to make the decisions? The continuum leadership theory considers three factors. What is the preferred style? How is the relationship or how are the relationships in the team? And what is the situation? What are the environmental factors that are involved? Uh oh. So I enjoyed this diagram as well. I think it lays out the continuum leadership theory very well. You have two extreme ends. You have the managed-centered leadership or boss-centered leadership. There's no authority to the individuals or other team members. It's all in the hands of the leader. The other extreme would be that um, more like a laissez-faire, uh, the individual members have the authority and the freedom. And then these are the seven leadership styles that match um, the, the levels of authority or freedom on the continuum. There's a lot of different factors involved as well. Organizational structure, time, ability of the individuals and things of that nature. The path goal leadership theory, we have uh, another theory, contingency leadership theory developed by Evans and House. This one really spoke to me quite a bit because its emphasis is on how the leader's behavior affects performance of followers and the team, and especially you know how a leader can motivate their followers. Uh, I'm really big into goal setting, and so in a nutshell, for the path goal leadership theory, paths are created that will lead to specific goals. And the leader role is to support the followers in achieving those goals by providing resources and information, and the leaders are selecting behaviors that best align with employees' needs. So there's a lot of different things going on with the path goal leadership theory. What are your employees' needs? You know, what are the goals? And how can the leader help the followers accomplish their goals? So again, de uh, defining goals, clarifying objectives, removing any obstacles, and providing support information and resources along the path to success. There are four types of behavior or leader behavior with the path goal theory. Directive leadership, supportive leadership, participative leadership, and achievement leadership. And they're going to be determined by situational factors as well. What are the needs of the followers? And what is the work environment like? So. Again, another diagram to summarize the path goal theory of leadership. We have two factors, the subordinate fa characteristics factors, the environmental factors. You know, the subordinate personal characteristics, their perceived ability, you know, um, of the level of the task. Do they think that they can accomplish the task? Um, the need for affiliation, working as a group, um, you know, things like that, the environmental factors, the task structure, the work group structure, 
organizational structure and then the leader will select the best leadership style based on the two factors and they are going to choose the one that will provide the most motivation for the employee because again the goal is to create a path and guide employees down that path towards achieving their goal their goals leadership substitutes theory uh, accounts for situations in which leadership is neutralized where leadership is not needed um, there's going to be times when um, there's no need for a leader the leader will have no influence and the leadership is just going to be irrelevant uh, their substitutes replace the need for leadership and neutralizers they uh, impact the effectiveness of the leader leaders really need to understand that there's going to be times when their leadership is not needed and there's going to be different factors involved with uh, developing that knowledge um, based on characteristics of the subordinates what are their skill levels and experience and motivation the characteristics of the task what is the task is it simple is it recurring is it something that you know that they're quite familiar with that they've proven that they've been effective in um, completing before so again man managers and leaders need to be aware that they don't always need to directly exert their leadership styles or influence over their workers all the time so that's the point of the leadership substitutes theory in a nutshell there the implementation of the path goal theory i selected this one again because i'm really big on goal setting and this one um, is based off the motivation motivation theories of goal setting and the expectancy theory and I feel that it aligns best with the the culture of the current organization that I work at uh, which is relationship oriented and also the path goal theory is very relationship oriented um, in my opinion it's kind of challenging to help your staff create goals for themselves if you don't know them there has to be that element of a relationship there and it needs to be a positive cooperative relationship a give and take there i'm going to come back to that so the the overall goal is to boost the motivation enhance staff performance and satisfaction and so another reason i selected this one is because the organization that i work for is in the infancy stage um, and they're just now rolling out monthly goals for employees within the like the last week or two and so i think implementing the path goal theory would help for uh, their idea of goal setting like their purpose behind launching that um, putting that structure in place would enhance it and make it even more purposeful for not only the managers but for their staff because right now it's just kind of oh you need to write two goals and send them to me by such and such date well there's no uh, education on how to first the importance of the, writing the goals second how to write them appropriately um, because if people don't understand the importance and they don't understand how to write goals that are specific and you know relevant and attainable and measurable they're going to get frustrated and the goals are going to not really not really mean anything uh, so the path goal leadership theory would add structure and more purpose to the the goals that the staff would be writing every month um, and it would encourage the leader and the followers to collaborate so it or it would expand upon the relationships that the leaders have already established with their followers and they would think it would provide a really valuable opportunity for them to collaborate even more so here real quick with my steps because i'm running out of time sorry uh, educate the leaders on pgt um, then the leaders would identify the needs of their employees the leaders would identify the motivating factors of their employees they would you know 
basically base it on the trust and respect that they've already developed and then they would select the appropriate